Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Elite Physique University. I'm John Gorman, your host. We've got Jason Theobald, IFBB Pro in the house. Jason, what's going on, man? How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, no complaints, man. Um, got back from California a few days ago. It was a great trip. So I'm, I'm kind of refreshed and revived and uh, been doing good. Yeah, man. What's, uh, before we get to our, our special guest and I talk about my week, what's, uh, what's new with you? Any exciting news? Anything on the business front or personal front? Um, man, you know what? Uh, we do have a new flavor coming out with new ethics. Uh, I think we're playing that guest the flavor game, so I can't tell y'all, but it's going to be delicious. It took a while to get the uh, flavor system right. So it will be, will be tasty. It will be uh, in high demand, I believe. Um, my joint formula will be out uh, probably in 10 days, two, two weeks. So anyone who's got bad joints, I'm telling you, the shit works really well. So you'll want to check that out. Um, you know, as far as consulting and all that, man, business is staying steady. I signed four new people this week. Um, I really have no complaints. And then, as I mentioned, I got back from California. That was a good trip and really kind of recharged my batteries. I got to unplug a lot. Um, we did a hot air balloon over Santa Barbara County, which was some of the prettiest like scenery I've seen. Um, yeah. So I, I'm just in good spirits and a good mind frame. That's awesome, man. Um, as far as me, and then, then we'll get to our special guest, Chris, as far as me, I'm really just kind of nose down right now. We've got uh, our new stuff getting ready to launch with Fat Muscle for our fall launch. And I, I can't really go into that too much because some of it's a surprise. Um, but we've, you know, done photo shoots for the new apparel. And we just got in some new ice shakers, as Chris knows, because he did those for us. And we're going to talk a little bit more about, about that. So we're going to launch those. They're going to be yellow. They're badass. Um, but really I'm getting ready for our seminar, Jason, because you're headed here to stay at my house here in about a week and yeah, we've got the, Thursday. Uh, yeah, the Elite Wait. Physique University seminar. Um, it's sold out basically. Yep. We, we have one ticket because we had one person that wanted to go ahead and donate that. So I'm doing something with that, but we're sold out. We've got 50 people. It's going to be a fun weekend, but really just kind of checking the boxes, you know, I made that post the other day about everything that went wrong at the physique summit last year with people, <laughs> you know, cancel last second and all that. So <laughs> my stress has been a little bit, of, been a little bit higher, you know, cause whenever you're in charge of an event and you have, you know, all these people that you're, that have paid to be there like that to me is kind of stressful because I don't want to let people down. So, yeah, 100, yeah. you know me, I'm, I'm a, I'm I a do, planner. Yeah. So I've got everything planned out, triple checked. I've got backup. So that's, that's pretty much been my week. Um, Chris Gronkowski, we're going to get to an intro with you for a minute, man, but just kind of give give our listeners here what's new with you this week, anything exciting or something new that you've learned, what's going on, man? Man, there's always something new. When you have three kids, there's always something new every yeah, day, man. Uh, so a couple things. My kids started baseball. That's pretty cool. Um, new warehouse. We finally moved into it. Uh, we've been struggling with inventory. Uh, you know, Two months ago, more than half our product was sold out. Went to uh, three times the size on the warehouse. Finally got into it. Man, that's a lot of work moving. That's for sure. But we're in. We're cranking. We're ready to go and ready for the holiday season. So super pumped about that, man. So that's that's the newest, best thing that's happening right now. Well, congrats on the new warehouse. Is that you're in the Dallas area? Is it is it by you? Is your warehouse located somewhere else? So I'm a huge fan of being as close to work as possible. So it's it's super close. It's right near us, and um, it's like a you know, probably like a 10 minute drive for me. So uh, it's right here in the Dallas Fort Worth area. I love that, man. So you, you like to be close. You like to get your hands in it, You said moving was a bitch, but did all five of you guys get together? Did you get, get family so all together? I wish I brought the family down. Uh, yeah, it was mostly me. I was, I was working, you know, weekends and um, I, you know, I did everything from sweeping the floor, mopping it to um, you know, I was using a scissor lift to put lights up. And I'm like, man, this is what being an entrepreneur is all about. I'm sure, you know, man, just tasks and things you never thought you'd do. You know, you're grinding it out, man, and, and you're making it happen. So it's been good, but it's always a lot of work. Yeah, I love that, man. I, I literally just bought a six by twelve enclosed trailer um, yesterday for a couple grand because my one of my manufacturers is only like four hours away, and I like to just get in the truck, put my headphones in, listen to uh, you know podcasts or whatever, you know e or uh, audio books, and just go pick up my new product because I'm impatient. I don't like to wait on it to be shipped. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I went and did that. I I like in the trenches. I like that part. You know, at some point we'll all kind of outgrow it, but I can uh, I can relate to that with you. So Chris, if you if you would just give people a, a quick intro, 
Um, some people are familiar with Ice Shaker. Some people are familiar with you as an athlete. If you would just kind of give everybody a little bit more about you. Yeah, for sure. So the middle of the five Gronkowski brothers. So if anyone doesn't know the family, uh, you know, four out of five of us played in the NFL. The oldest brother was scared to play football. So we actually played baseball <laughs> instead and uh, got drafted into the MLB, uh, played in the minor uh -huh. league. So five brothers uh, that played professional. Um, I was the shortest, the smallest, the slowest. Uh, but I still made it. I uh, ended up playing, uh, got four credited seasons in the NFL with the Cowboys, Broncos, and Colts. And then from there, moved on to the business world. Uh, took everything I learned from sports and really just applied it to be an entrepreneur. Uh, so I actually started with my wife's business that I got lucky to um, kind of get forced into. After my third team, she was like, hey, I am not finding another job. I am not going on more interviews. So she found a way to work from home that actually turned into this, this great engraving business that we still have. And I went into that for five years. My first year out of the NFL, we were making more money than I was playing. So it was a really good transition for me. It was super lucky because that usually doesn't happen. And then from there, five years into it, I thought of the idea for Ice Shaker. You know, I was a guy that was still going to the gym once a day or twice. I was getting those double sessions in still. And I was really just looking for a product, uh, you know, that I could use all day, every day. It ended up, um, you know, I needed the perfect bottle. and ended up being a shaker bottle for anyone living an active and healthy lifestyle. So... It's kind of the short version. Got on Shark Tank, uh, investments from Mark Cuban, Alex Rodriguez, and it kind of just took off from there. So now we're moving into new warehouses. Yeah, yeah. man, that's that's right. awesome. We're uh, we're definitely going to get into the nuts and bolts about that. That's really what the show is going to be centered around. We're going to kind of peel the curtain back, so to speak, about how you started the company, your trip to be on the show uh, with Shark Tank. But I, I've got a couple questions for you. Um, Give people an idea. So how old are you now? When was your playing career? When did it start? And what year did it end? Yep. So I am 33 years old now. Uh, I started in 2010, uh, played till 2013. Uh, so I went to a new team every year uh, throughout that, that time period. But man, for me, it was, uh, you know, people think like, hey, that's short or like that, you know, you know, that wasn't that good of a career. For me, it was amazing. Uh, you know, I was a guy that I never thought I was going to make it to that level. Uh, and it's, it's, man, it's, it really is. It's a one in a million. It's probably way higher than that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I wasn't even the best in my own family. So, uh, for me to get to that point, uh, you know, get pension, get 401k, uh, and get that money to then fund the business was an absolutely huge success for me. Let's, uh, let, let me ask another question. These are just kind of popping up. These aren't on our show notes here, guys. Um, how important was it for you to be in the middle of your brother's how far, how important was that competitiveness, that, that drive? Is that something that helped you? Is it something that was important or did it just automatically come naturally? And it, it was it definitely both. So it came naturally for sure. You know, we grew up in a household, five boys, and we were that house where everyone came over to. So it wasn't just five of us. It was 10 kids a day for the most part. And we played anything you could think of, you know, we're just making up games in the backyard, backyard baseball, mini sticks in the basement, you know, just taking off the couches, you know, couch pillows and running full speed at each other, just trying to knock each other out. So super competitive from day one. And, and, and so it really helped me as well, because as we grew older, we actually became more of a team. We started supporting each other instead of trying to fight each other every single day. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that helped push us to the next level uh, once we got there. But I still say to this day, man, I would have never made it to the NFL, but my mindset was I am not going to be the only brother who doesn't. So when you throw yourself against the you're back against the wall like that, you know, there's no other option but to make it. You know, I could not fail because I could not live with the fact that everyone was going to ask me, hey, man, you know, what happened to you? Why did, why did all four of your brothers make it and you didn't? So you know, if you want motivation, if you want mindset, if you could put yourself into a place like that where you have no other options but to succeed, you're going to succeed. Well, I have a question for both of you guys because you're both athletes. And, Jason, you can kind of give your background too as well, not just being sure. an IFBB pro bodybuilder, but as a soccer player and just yeah. an athletic person. Um, guys, how important is it for you because you both own very successful businesses? Jason, everybody here on the show knows all of yours. Obviously, Chris, we're going to get into yours. Um, how important was that competitive streak or being an athlete? How did that translate over into the success of your business, whether it was worth it, work ethic or what? Jason, we'll go ahead and, and throw that to you first. I mean, you know, with, with sports, you learn, you know, that drive early on if you want to succeed, but you also learn like teamwork as well. And so you take both of those into business with you because, you know, you can't be a one man Island. So, 
you know, you start to build a team to get to where you are. So like any of the successes I have, it's because I had really good people around me, you know? So I learned from playing a team sport that that was kind of best way to approach things. Um, you know, and then just playing sports and, you know, like Chris was saying, like he had brothers, I didn't have any brothers, but I had tons of kids in the neighborhood and I, I wanted to be the best, you know, and we would do the same shit. We would play all kinds of sports from rollerblade hockey to, you know, hitting the baseball over the fence. And that was a home run, like all that crap, you know? So it was, just, it was ingrained in me from young too. Um, so all that translates into business, both of those avenues, the competitiveness to, you know, beat your competitor, but then also to understand that you're not an Island and you can't do it alone. You got to have a good team. Awesome. What about you, Chris? Yeah, man, the teamwork's huge. And, and that was, it was a mistake of mine. And I don't know if it was the same way with you, Jason, but when you're competitive, man, you want to do everything yourself. Right. And you're like, Hey, I can do this better than anyone else. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to work 80 hours a week. And you know, at one point you can't anymore, you know, you, you max yourself out. You just physically can't do it anymore. So, you know, I waited I, and, and you have to do that at first. Yeah. But there's a point where you can't do that anymore if you want to continue to scale and grow. And I just waited too long for that. So I think that was one of my biggest mistakes that I made. And I really put a lot of focus on it this year. And, and teamwork's huge, man. If you want to get to that next level, you need a championship team yep. to get there. And um, I've learned that pretty quick and kind of mad at myself for not realizing it earlier because sports teaches you that. <laughs> right. But just being so competitive, man, I just it was hard for me to give up responsibilities. Uh, the other thing I learned that I, I think was big is really time management especially at the college level, man. When you go through college, like I, it's one of those things where I'm like, how did I do it? You know, Where'd you play, by the way, tell our listeners. So I played uh, first at Maryland and I, and I transferred oh, wow. to Arizona. So I actually oh, played cool. with my brother, Dan, at Maryland and um, transferred Both and played with cool. Rob yeah, cool. at Arizona. And so, man, but you think about that schedule, you know, you wake up mandatory study hall, you know, mandatory breakfast, right to you know, a workout or class. And then right after class, you're going to you know, the workout or practice. And then you get home at like six or seven, you know, you're eating mandatory dinner and then you're studying. And then at the same time, you're trying to party as well. And so if you could get through <laughs> yeah. college, yeah, if you could get through all of that and come yeah. out and, and still have good grades as a student athlete, you know, you can do anything. And that's what business is really about. It's figuring things out, man. It's time management and you're really a problem solver at the end of the day. So, you know, it, it transferred over and, and all that hard work to study, all that, man, because you learn how to figure things out on your own, which is the biggest you know, that's the biggest skill that you can have as, as an entrepreneur. Let's uh, I, I do want to talk about Chris, you and I have a relationship now, a business relationship and a friendship as well. Um, we met through social media. You had picked up my book, ask a diet coach last year. And um, I thought it was super cool because you went actually on your IG and left a video review for me. I was like, Holy shit. Like this guy really liked the book and he went the extra mile. So I started to dig in, listen to your podcast and just, kind of get to know a little bit more about you. And the next thing you know, I mean, here's a, here's a picture of yeah, here. Look at that bad boy. Yeah. If, if I can get this, this will be on YouTube if, as long as this video uploads. Right. But like, this is a new one, Jason, you'll see him when you come stay next okay. week. Um, we started to do business together and we've ordered, I don't know, four or five different customers. You got, you got one of those for me? Yeah, I do, man. As long as, as long as you'll walk around, it says fat muscle. So I don't give a shit. <laughs> um, you know, we, we started doing business and I've got four or five different you know, custom shakers that, that we've done here and we sell them on our website as the exclusive shaker uh, for fat muscle because they really, they really are the best shaker in the business. And my point is, is it comes back to our listeners. There's so many connections that you can make friendships and stuff like that, that you never, ever know where things are going to lead. So I just want to kind of give people that, that short story. Um, there was that connection through the book, man. And I really, I just want to say thank you here on the show. It was really important to me that you took the time to actually do that and you didn't have to. Yeah, man, I did it because I, I learned so much from it and it changed my entire outlook on training. You know, I was a guy who was, man, I was going to the gym every morning at 4.30 and I was going hard. I was going really hard and um, you know, not just lifting. I would play you know, basketball four times a week also for an hour, you know, playing hard, competitive basketball. And I wasn't growing, man. And for as hard as I was working, I was sitting there like, yo, why am I not really you know, getting much more muscle mass? And it really it was it's once I read your book, it was a huge eye opener that I wasn't eating carbs, man. I kind of fell into that, that whole, you know, no bread thing and just kind of doing something because everyone else was, and I didn't know why, and I didn't research it. And, you know, I didn't really know that much about my nutrition at that time. So when I read the book, 
man, it completely changed. It started crushing carbs before and after my lift and immediately felt better and got a lot stronger. And I didn't gain weight like people you know, say, or I didn't get fat. I actually looked a lot better. And, and I sent you some pictures. I think you saw me afterwards. I was like, man, look at the changes almost immediately. I mean, it was within a month where it was like, people were coming up to me going, dude, what are you on? Right. I was like, I'm on, I'm on carbs. What do you mean? What am I on? <laughs> that was it. So I've told so many people about the book because it is, it's an absolute, absolutely great resource, man. Because even as an athlete, you're never really taught nutrition. You know, you're taught how to weight lift and, you know, and you don't really need it really at, at, at the, at the athletic level, because you're so active that you just need to eat for the most part. So they never really teach you, you know, diet and, and nutrition and, um, it would help a lot, but you know, back in my playing day, I was so active. I would, I would eat bacon just to keep weight for the most part. So, uh, didn't really need to learn the skill or, or learn uh, about nutrition until afterwards. And then you know, your book greatly helped even after a bunch of research I already did, you know, I, I just kind of fell into this trap and I never really researched it enough. So amazing resource and, um, a great quick read too, man. Like if you want to know, you know, the answer to something, you just look and you search for that question and then it's right there. So I really appreciate that. I've told so many people about the book and, and that's why I had to post about it. And I appreciate that, man. I know people, we, we don't really talk about it much here on the show. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and link that in the show notes for anybody that wants it. Chris, just let me do a shameless plug. So thanks, Chris. Yeah. Um, speaking of shameless plugs real quick, and then we're going to jump into the business side of this. Um, talk about your podcast. And that's the cool thing because like you've learned stuff from me. I learn a ton from your podcast, the Gronked Up podcast I've been a guest on. Um, talk a little bit about that and so people can get an idea if they want to go listen to it. Yeah, man. So it, it really came about as just um, a way to give people more, you know, more value. We actually give real information. And I started it because I was getting so many questions about health, nutrition, uh, fitness, you know, sports, but also about business too. So instead of writing like these little two, you know, two line answers, I decided to do full podcasts about it. And then, um, you know, when COVID hit and when I ran out of topics that I was really good at, I went and got, you know, got experts. So you were one of the first guys I reached out to because COVID hit. I was sitting, you know, on my couch most of the day or in a chair for the most part. And I wasn't as active. I'm like, man, we got to get John on immediately because all I keep doing is open up the damn fridge and it's going to become a problem pretty quick. And I know everyone else is doing the same thing. So, uh, you know, went out and, and our goal was really to find experts in subjects that we weren't experts in. And that's, that's what we've done. So really anything that I find interesting in that I know nothing about, I'm like, yeah, we got to get them on if they're experts at it. So it's been a, it's been a fun show. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and link that in the show notes as well. So people can check it out. Um, Chris, let's go ahead and dive in. So we'll go back to your days as an NFL player. Were you looking to transition from being an entrepreneur? Um, you know, as soon as you were done, did, were you already thinking about that during your playing years? How did you know that you wanted to out, uh, transition out into business while you were still playing? Yeah, so I had this game plan, man, the whole time. So I, I was, you know, I went to school and I had an accounting degree. And so I'm like, man, I'm, I'm probably not going to make it to the NFL. Uh, so let's just go and get the best degree possible. And to me, it was accounting. I figured it was the hardest thing. I figured I could get a CPA degree and I'd make some decent money coming out. So I got my accounting degree. I hated it, but I was really good with numbers. So it's like, hey, it makes good money and, and I'm good with numbers. So let's do it. Uh, you know, I ended up getting my, my chance and, and it was kind of, uh, you know, as an undrafted free agent and, and I made it. So at that point I was like, man, I, I, I made it for a year, but who knows how long this is going to last. Let's have a plan B. So uh, really the idea was I wanted to do players taxes because as an athlete, you have to file in every state that you play in. And as an athlete, it's also the first time you ever file taxes. So, you know, all the guys are like, Hey, I'm not even going to file this year, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know, they owe us a lot of money, man. We have a lot of write-offs. You probably want to file, but no one knows that. And so I went to my CPA for the first year and it was expensive, man. Like they charge a lot, especially when you have to file in eight different states. So you know, after paying a couple thousand dollars, I'm like, what am I doing? You know, I have this accounting degree, uh, you know, let's do it myself. And then this could probably lead to a nice little career afterwards where you know, I just drop some letters in, in guys' mails, mailboxes and you know, it just says, hey, if you need your taxes done, hit me up. I'm a former player. I know all the write-offs. Uh, and I work for all my game plan was like, I'm going to work for like four months a year, you know, four months out of the year, <laughs> do taxes, you know, make all this money and then chill and, and I'll be good. And um, I like it. 
So that was that was it, man. And if anyone's listening that that wants to do that, it's probably still a good idea. But um, you know, my wife's business was what ended up happening was you know after after you know three different teams and after coming out of college as well, four different moves. Uh, you know, she finally said, "I'm going to work from home." So uh, a business that I never thought I'd be in. I was I was you know engraving wedding gifts for the most part. But man, this business just took off and there's a ton of opportunity there. And so after my third year, you know, my, my contract ended and I didn't get signed yet. So I went back and just said, hey, you know, let's look into this. Like this is the real deal. And um, you know, started looking into it, started investing my money into commercial grade laser engravers and um, it exploded. You know, this market exploded and uh, ended up making more money in my first year outside the NFL than I was playing. So I uh, took that, rode that wave. Uh, kept growing, 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 got out of our house. We were, we were working out of our house for the first two years. Our garage was just full of product, man. It was just a disaster. It's now my kid's room that we were working out of. And um, it was a tiny little room, 100 degrees in Texas. We're just sweating the whole time. But uh, didn't care, man. Just just young and, and grinding it out. And uh, that really led to, um, you know, five years later, the idea for Ice Shaker. Uh, we were actually engraving a lot of bottles and some of them were stainless steel and they were, you know, they were insulated, but none of them could go to the gym with you. None of them you could shake product in. You know, none of them were easy to fill and easy to clean. So the idea really just came about like, hey, this technology is there, but no one's put it into a form that's usable for an athlete, you know, for someone living an active and healthy lifestyle. And, and so I went home that day and I'm like, there's got to be one somewhere. Like, it's got to be something. So I went online and there was, there was stainless steel bottles, but they weren't insulated. So you know, if you put something hot or cold in it, you either freeze or burn your hand and looked everywhere. And I'm like, there's no way no one's done this yet. And it just wasn't out there yet. So <laughs> man, you, you think it's easy to, to make a product and to launch something, but it is never, never easy. So I went on that journey, 20 prototypes later, finally had a product in hand. And um, that's when the real hard work started. Well, let's, let's get into the nuts and bolts before we do that. Oh gosh, here we go. Uh, I I've never had that, that one. <laughs> I got never had that. This, is that new? This is, uh, it is. This is the white trash energy drink, Chris, because I grew up in a trailer, and if I still lived in a trailer park, these are the monsters I would be drinking to this day. But I'm going to pour it in my my ice shaker cup here, my my shaker. And yeah, that sounds good. I do want you to break down the difference real quick in this shaker cup versus just some of the other stainless shakers that are out on the market because I, I know – Nothing, I've had the same one, not that one, but I've had a black one for like a year and a half, a year or so. It never stinks. It never holds odor. Talk about the difference in yours, and then we're going to start to talk about shape. Yeah, then, then we're going to talk about uh, Shark Tank. Yeah, dude, it's That's pretty badass. Yeah, I mean, all I do is if I drink a shake out of it, I rinse it out with hot water, and the thing yeah, never, ever. That's what I do at mine, but it still stinks. Yeah, this never stinks, man. So, Chris, tell, tell us why. Tell us what's up with these. Yeah, so it's, it's a kitchen-grade insulated stainless steel, so... If you do leave protein in there for like two weeks, so man, it's gonna smell of awful like anything. Everything will, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but if you leave it in, you know, the cup, uh, the stainless steel, it's like a fork, man. It's the same thing that your forks and spoons are made out of at kitchen grade. So, uh, like you said, you can pretty much rinse it with water and you're good to go. Uh, the lid is plastic though, so if you leave it in there for that long, just toss it in the dishwasher, and because uh, that thing, it's it's gonna man, protein is protein. We all know what that's like, but um, yeah, the difference and what's really different about it is. It's an insulated stainless steel as well. So it's not going to sweat. You're not going to feel the ice in it. It's going to hold ice. You fill it with just ice and leave it on the counter. It'll be over 30 hours before it melts all the way. And um, hmm. what also is cool is it has a bucket handle on it that snaps down. So it's super easy to carry, super easy to hold. Obviously the classic pop top, but what really separates it is the agitator inside. So uh, it will twist off and it makes it super easy to clean. But what the agitator does is obviously break up protein, but it's also a strainer. So you know, with an insulated cup, all that ice just sits there and it'll clog the spout of other bottles. This will always allow for good water flow because it won't allow it to, to get clogged. And then it has so many other benefits. You know, it's not going to be loud when you're shaking it. You know, if you put a metal ball in a metal cup, it is probably the most annoying thing ever. So uh, it's silent when you shake it. And then it also works as a strainer. So if you like to party, or you want to put anything in it and shake it up and pour shots. Uh, it works great for that. It floats in the pool, man. It does everything. So, you know, really the idea was one bottle for the entire day, anywhere you go from work, you know, to the weight room, to the airplane, to the pool, you know, to, to the kids game, you have one bottle that you use all day. 
that will keep your drink hot or cold. So, uh, man, it's, it's, it's awesome because it, it's my lifestyle and I made it for myself and, and that's why I'm so passionate about it. And that's to tell you the truth, why the company works, man, because if you don't love what you're doing, yep. it will never be successful because everything's a grind, man. No matter how great of an idea you think you have, there's going to be so many ups and downs. And if you don't love it, you're just going to give up on it. So, yeah, you can tell there's, there's a lot of effort and a lot of time has went into this thing. All the, every tiny little detail on it is very, very specific. And I have a question before we yeah. get past this part. I think it's a good time to ask it. Uh, if Chris doesn't mind answering it, how much money did you have in the 20 prototypes? Man. So of my own money that I put into it, uh, I was probably about a quarter million into the company. Wow. My own money before, um, I got an investment from Shark Tank. Damn. Okay. So most of it was, an, it, it was profitable. Like I was able to turn a profit and I sure. just grinded at the beginning. Like dude, I didn't pay for any advertising besides like boots at the beginning. It was just all grind, grind, grind. But you know, I, I dumped a lot of money into, into product uh, innovation and then also into inventory. Yep. Okay. Do, if, if you don't mind me asking, um, we try and be as transparent on the show, but when it comes to money, you don't have to answer if you don't want, but I know with, with my supplement company, I've been, good with my money over the years and I haven't gone had to go to the bank to borrow money or anything like that um, because I had enough saved up so I've used all yep. of mine is that something that you did with ice shaker did, did you need to did you need to go to the bank did you have other people to, to kind of help you out or was it was it all you at first what that look like yeah man it was um so between the NFL money and then you know we took that we put it into my wife's company and then you know that did really yeah. well and so we actually, it was mostly like her company basically funded it. So we had all that money saved up. I, I was all about, and still am, man. Like I, I love paying everything off. You know, I, I hated bringing in other people's money. So uh, even when I went on Shark Tank, I didn't need the money. You know, I went on there really, I mean, amazing exposure play, but uh, yeah, I told the Sharks right from day one, like, hey, I'm not here for the money. You know, I'm here for the expertise. I'm super early into it. I think you guys can help me out a lot. And uh, yeah, and the money is a bonus. You know, it did help us go to that next level really fast, but it was all self-funded and, and I've never taken on any other money besides, uh, you know, from the investment from Shark Tank. Yeah, yeah. that's super cool. I, I know a lot of people we're going to get to a little bit later in the show. They're, they're interested in that part. Let's, let's go back to 2013. I remember hearing on a podcast that you did, or I read it somewhere, you know, back in thir 2013, you sent an email in and you were thinking about Shark Tank. Is that correct? What, how did all that kind of transpire and what led you to want to get on Shark Tank? Yeah, man. So it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was around that time I was with the, I was with the Broncos at the time and I got an email from my NFL agent and it simply said, you know, I don't even usually check them, but somehow I checked this one and it just said, Hey, Shark Tank is looking for current or former NFL players to come on the show. And you know, it's an entertainment show. They're looking to build their audience. So they're trying to bring on some names to, to attract attention. So at that time I watched the show all the time. Um, man, I played a lot of video games. I watched a lot of TV on my off time. You know, that was, that's what you do as an NFL player. So I probably watched every episode and, um, you know, I was like, man, one day I'm going to think of a great idea and I'm going to come on the show, but that is not today. So I'm going to save this email. I'm going to start it. And, uh, I started and like, it was always in the back of my mind, like, you know, one day I'm going to get there. And, um, you know, my wife's business did really well. And you know, it was always like, Hey, should I go try to pitch this? But you know, it didn't make sense. It, it didn't have, you know, that proprietary you know, formula. It wasn't really that, that shark tank kind of idea. So, uh, when the idea for, for, for ice shaker came about, it was all the, the game plan was there, man. The second I thought of the idea, I was like, all right, you know, I got to get this prototype made. You know, I got to get some sales, but I got to at least have some kind of proof of concept before I email them back or they're just going to think I'm a joke. So, you know, let's get the product. Let's get some kind of sales. And I had like this, this six month window to get it done because I knew that they filmed in, in June. And so at that time, we were able to get the product in right before the new year. Uh, so it was really, we really started selling in January and I had like three months to kind of get some sales. And my idea was, you know, three months in, hopefully we have enough. I can email them, have some kind of proof of concept. And then I'd have another three months to really jack up the sales as high as possible uh, before I got on the show. So I could get some kind of valuation at least and not just go on there and, you know, you have nothing. So uh, three months in, we were at about 25,000 in sales. And I shot the email out and I was all pumped and I was checking you know, my, my phone every five seconds and uh, email comes back and the girl just simply writes like, hey, thanks for reaching out. I don't work there anymore. And I was like, man, oh, this, this five-year plan, man. Like I have five years later, I emailed back. <laughs> And I'm, and I'm expecting the answer somehow, right? And um, 
luckily, like within the next five to 10 minutes, she just wrote back. Like I didn't even respond. I was devastated. And she writes back and she's like, Hey, um, you know, I actually found the girl who works there now. Here's her contact. I'll have her reach out to you. And, you know, she, and she did. So connected with her, she simply said, Hey, submit a video. It kind of gave me some guidelines and man, I was kind of, I was kind of back to that, like undrafted uh, free agent mindset. I'm like, Hey, I got one shot to blow up this video. And I know this is an entertainment show. I got to make it entertaining, but I got to get, you know, the point of the product across as well. So that turned into just this shoot of like ripping off my shirt and like editing in me catching, you know, touchdown passes. And like, it was just ridiculous. I wish I had it. I have it saved somewhere, but I didn't even know how to, you actually upload it to YouTube and I didn't know how to like use YouTube. So I think I used my brother's account and I can't find the video and everyone's begging to see it, but I don't know where it is. And, and I've looked for hours and I'm like, all right, I just got to give up on it. But needless to say, they emailed me back and um, I was like, they're going to love it or hate it. And all they said was like, wow, that was, that was amazing. Uh, you know, we'd love to take the next step. So uh, from there, it's just a lot of paperwork and, and um, some due diligence. And, and I was able to go start getting ready for the show. Okay. So what, what year was that? Was that 2017? Yes, that, that was email. 2000. Um, so the, the email was, it was probably around 2012 when I was with the Broncos. And then um, I emailed them back in probably like late 2016. Okay. So it's, yeah, it's probably like four, four years later. Okay. So you've got, you've got some sales under your belt. You've got 90 days worth. You kind of know what you have. They come, they say, okay, we're going to, we're going to take a look at you. What's, what's the preparation look like? What's that process look like now that you know you've got a, a, a shot to be on the show? Man, so it, it came down to let's watch every single episode possible and write down every question that they've ever asked and then make sure I had an answer for it. And, and I, you know, I've seen people just get roasted on there for not knowing yes. the answer. And I was like, I, that's not going to happen to me. So <laughs> everything I possibly could, you know, I, I had my, my parents asking me questions. I was figuring out valuations with my dad, who's been in business for over 30 years. And uh, man, you could have asked me anything at that point. And I had a great answer memorized for you. <laughs> so by the time I walked out there, man, I was comfortable because I was confident in myself. I knew everything that was going to happen. I knew you know, what questions could be asked. And uh, at that point, you know, I had my brothers in the back room waiting to come out and play a game of flip cup against the Sharks. So I was, I was pretty <laughs> pumped up on stage. So did, did you have any, did you, did you know anyone that had been on the show prior to that? That's something I've always wanted to ask you. Do you personally know anyone that's been on? I, I didn't at the time, but I, I started trying to find people. And so I, I did find a guy, a uh, local guy that was on the show. And, and I, you know, his biggest piece of advice was actually, you know, you better know what you're doing. Don't look like an idiot on TV because your kids are going to watch this. You know, <laughs> it's going to be around for the rest of your life. So he's like, you better know what you're talking about when you get up there. You better be prepared, man, because, you know, if you do mess up, this is never going away. So mm. make sure you're ready. Let me, let me go back and you may have kind of already answered this and then we'll get to the day of the show, kind of what that looks like. Um, the money that you had that you were making leading up to Shark Tank, do you know that number off, off the top of your head? Yeah. So when, yeah, we, we, I knew every number going mm -hmm. into that show, but um, yeah, we were about 80,000 in sales when I was walking on stage six months in. Okay. Okay. And, and what I want to talk about real quick is you know, we, we have a lot of coaches and trainers and people that listen to the show. They, they are entrepreneurs and, you know, some of them, maybe they want to launch, you know, a supplement or a supplement line or something like that, or they want to write a book, whatever. Um, the money that you made, this is what I think a lot of people don't understand until they actually get to this business. And I know all three of us understand this part because, you know, Jason, you and I have supplement companies and other stuff. Yeah. The money that you make what did you do with that money? Did you try and pocket any of it? Did you put it all back into the company? I, I think people misunderstand. They hear $80,000 and they don't understand. Um, were you in the hole still after that? What did, what did that look like? Yeah. So, I mean, on paper, you're profitable, you know, in your bank account, you know, I, was, I was down <laughs> close to a quarter million at, yeah. at, at that point. And so, yeah, it, it, no, I wasn't taking any salary. I actually, I didn't take a salary um, for over two years, even after Shark Tank, I still don't get a salary. Uh, I actually didn't take a penny out of the company dividend wise or anything for over two and a half years. So yeah. uh, even after Shark Tank hit, uh, even after we we sold 3 million in the next 12 months, you know, I didn't take a salary and I didn't take a penny out of the company. It all went back in. Uh, we went from one product at the time, you know, one size, one color, uh, you know, to over, over a hundred different variations now at this point. So 
every penny was poured back in and um, man, we're still, we're still growing and building today. So I, I still don't sit there and just pull everything out. Uh, it's still man, a majority of the money is going back into product innovation and the company's doing really well, but you wouldn't know that by looking at my bank account. I can tell you that. Yeah. I, I just think that's a tough one for people to understand because, you know, from the supplement side of things, you might, you know, may, maybe I bring in 30,000 in sales this month, but maybe I spent 39,000 for inventory that needs to be stocked up and all that stuff. And you know what I mean? So you, it's, it's kind of an up and down thing and it's, and it's been fun and interesting for me to learn because I've, I've always had other businesses that they don't operate that way. Um, how important is it that you had money set up operating capital kind of already set up? Um, and Jason, you can chime in here too, as well. Another job on the side where you're, where you're making plenty of money when you're trying to launch something like that, Jason, go ahead and we'll, I'll throw that over to you. Well, you know, um, I had Scooby prep, right. And so, I mean, that was highly profitable and doing very well. So, um, that's what I used to invest in when we started new ethics and I had, you know, a business partner, 50, 50. Um, and so I didn't need any money out of the supplement company and we still didn't take our initial investment back until year three. And we're going to probably do 3 million this year and year four. And I still don't take a salary or anything, you know, um, we'll take a dividend this year. It'll be a nice dividend check finally, but yeah, it, it's, it's vital to have um, a lifeline. You know, I'm not saying you can't do it and go all in and then you have no dollars left, but that's not how I did it. I had plenty in the bank if we needed more. Um, and I think it's really important um, to, to do that, do it that way. But I know there are people who, you know, go put it all on their credit card, man. And they go, you know, all in and, and that's, Hey, more power to you. It's just not how I did it. What about you, Chris? Yeah, man. I mean, there's definitely different ways to look at it. Um, like you were saying, man, interest hurts, man, especially early on. And when you're paying high interest rates for a loan, yep. man, that's a killer, man. That's a killer on the bottom line. So uh, for me, everything, like you said, side hustle, it was my wife's business that was paying for everything for two years. You know, without that, I wouldn't have been able to do it, you know, unless I was just pulling out of you know my account. So uh, the side also, and, and it wasn't like I wasn't working for her. I still work for her today. Uh, you know, there's, there's times when she has so many orders for Father's Day. You know, I was, I was working for her for almost a month. I would wake up at 4 a.m., work till 9 until her employees came in, go back to her shop at 6 and work until 10, you know, wow. just to get the orders out because this Father's Day was insane with COVID, man. You could not go to the store and buy a gift, and her business is gifts. You know, her, it's, it is Father's Day gifts, and she crushes with it. So, uh, yeah, I always have had that side hustle, man. And, and, and you have to, because at any time, you know, you can get COVID's a perfect example. You know, gyms can, can shut down. Anything can shut down for any reason. Um, and, and COVID has proven it at this point. If you don't have that second lifeline, you're going to be in a really tough spot. I, I know a lot of our listeners, they, they see the flashy, they, they hear about money. They see the flashy end product. They hear about companies making millions of dollars a year. But what they don't understand is the mom pop side of the business, even for a lot of big successful companies, a lot of them behind the scenes are still pretty mom pop. What was yours like kind of back when you started and what's that transition to? I mean, did you have one person, you know, shipping stuff out and like you were doing everything <laughs> on the back end? I mean, people, people need to understand the reality of it because you can't just go in and have a team of fucking 20 people when you start a business because you can't pay for that. So what, what's that look like? And Jason, feel free to chime in when you're done because you, you've built a whole team as well. And I'm in the middle of assembling mine. I think that's important for people to see. Yeah, man. You're looking at the full team right here, man. This was the, the full team. And um, even with my wife's business, I mean, when she was to the seven figure point, man, there was, there was three of us uh, at that point. It was me, her and her, and her brother-in-law. Uh, so you have to grind it out at first. It's, you can't just dump money into 20 people and man, it takes time to grow a business too. So there's not enough work at that time anyways, to, to really have 20 people on board. Uh, you got to bring them in though. Once you get to that point, like we we're hitting on earlier about team and you got to build the team at that point. But man, uh, I was doing everything from packing, shipping, engraving, customer service, answering the phones, ordering, you know, actually designing and ordering the product, designing the boxes, uh, Facebook ads, man, everything you could think of, I did. And, and, and I like that I did because now I have the knowledge about all of it. You know, if I just brought in a team and, you know, I, they just started doing it, I wouldn't know how good they were at their job. 
you know, I wouldn't know how good they were at Facebook ads. And I did that too in the past where I would bring in an expert. And if I didn't know what I knew because I did it myself, I would have thought they were doing a great job. But what I knew was that, hey, I did this all myself. I know what to expect if they're actually working and putting the work in. And when it's subpar and when it's not as good as what I was doing while I was doing that, basically part-time splitting it between a hundred other things, then I knew they just weren't that good at it. So you definitely have to start like that. And then you have to build a team at some point. Jason, do you want to chime in there? Because you built a pretty good team here too. And I, and I, and I know this is about ice shaker and this is about Chris, but I, I think the more value we can give our listeners when it comes to understanding behind the scenes of business, the better um, you've got a pretty good team assembled. Now, what'd that look like for you in the beginning? It was, it was very um, watered down. I mean, it was, so at first when we had the idea, um, you know, Vince was super busy with his business. Steph still had a hundred clients, you know, she was coaching. Obviously I had a ton, but I was really passionate about it. So I just, I was the label designer. I was, you know, contacting manufacturers. I was doing everything that you, you know, that you have to do on the back end of a supplement line while, while trying to run my business, just like Chris was saying. And so, you know, it got to a point though, where, you know, quickly, you know, how quickly you're getting sales, John, where I had to have, we had to have, have a little more structure. It couldn't just be me kind of trying to swim upstream like a damn salmon, you know? And so, you know, we made it to a million dollars in sales with no marketing whatsoever. We never even ran a Facebook ad. And so one of our first things we did was to bring on a, a, a team um, for us to do that. Um, and they've kicked ass um now they've got us what in 18 months up to three million so it was you know they looked at our shit and were like you haven't done a damn thing and you got up to a million that's great let us just take over um and then we brought on a couple employees and then we we basically outsource our shipping so you know they get like two bucks a box but it's worth it man we don't have to we don't have to we don't own a warehouse we don't have really any overhead they they, they even uh, keep all of our inventory for us with no extra cost so, you know, that was a good score for us um, without having to bring in, you know, a huge team and keep our, our overhead down. But, you know, no matter what, when you first start, you're going to be hustling um, and doing pretty much all of it. I mean, that's just the way it is. And you're probably going to have another job. And like Chris was saying, you're going to be working some crazy hours or you're getting up early in the morning, you're getting up at, you're, you're staying up at night when you'd rather be sitting there watching TV or hanging out with your family. It's just how it is. So if you want, you want nice shit and you want your stuff to be successful, that's just how it goes. Chris, what, what did your, I, I know you guys were doing everything kind of by yourself. Um, what'd your transition for shipping and all of that look like? Because as, as things start to get super, super busy, you can only handle so much. We've got a full-time employee now, Jacob Clessons. He's also a registered dietitian. He's handling some social, like I've got him kind of cross training on everything. Leslie handles all of our website stuff, our graphic design, like she's the artist and I'm doing all the stuff, Jason, you talked about with manufacturing and building supplements and all that. Chris, what, so ours is small. What did yours look like when it was like this and what, what's your team look like now when it comes to shipping and, and how long did that take? Yeah. So we, we've always shipped everything ourselves, and why we do is because we customize a lot. So, uh, you know, it would have been very tough logistically to have a 3PL shipping out, you know, some product and then us customizing some, and then, you know, you, you end up double shipping a lot of stuff. So that was, um, a decision we had to make early, you know, we wanted to do it ourselves. We were experts at engraving and customizing because that's what I was doing with my wife's business. So uh, we've always kept it in house. And now I wish I had the luxury of just having someone else ship it for us because that is nice. But um, <laughs> uh, the team, the team was exactly what you said. Uh, you know, we had responses. Everyone had, had all kinds of responsibilities from you know, shipping uh, to engraving, you know, printing labels is even, uh, you know, a challenge when you walk into a, a, you know, a thousand labels on a Monday, just printing those labels takes a while, man. And it actually is a skill. Like, it, you know, if you print them wrong, you pay a lot more money, uh, you know, for a package that, you know, should have cost two or three dollars less. So there's a lot of, of money to, to lose um, or, or save, you know, from, from shipping alone. So uh, man, still to this day, uh, it's still a team that's very agile. So, uh, you know, if we have to unload an entire container today, you know, my guys have to jump on that. Uh, if we have, you know, a sale over the weekend and we walk into a couple thousand labels, you know, they gotta, they gotta be able to do that. And then yeah, we turn around and we turn and burn, uh, orders for a couple thousand bottles, um, a week. So we have to also be able to, to be able to, to train them in, in customization and laser engraving and turn those as well. So we ask a lot of the guys and we try to train them in everything so that everyone knows it in case somebody's you know missing for that day. 
that one guy going down can't ruin the entire process for the entire week. Yeah. Love it. Love the behind the scenes information. Let, let's jump back to the show here. Um, when you're going on shark tank. So it's the day of, um, where was it at? And did you fly in? Did you drive in? What, what location was it at? Yeah. So they, they record in, in LA and, um, you know, you fly in, you stay at a hotel and it's, it's funny, man, because most people don't know this either is that the second I got there, this guy just pacing outside of the, the hotel and, you know, he runs up to me right when he gets there. Hey man, what are you doing? What's your, what's your name? What's your company? Blah, blah, blah. So he's also, you know, there to, to pitch on the show and you know, immediately he tells me like, yeah, I was here last year and, you know, I never got a chance to pitch. So they sent me home and now I'm back for my second year and hopefully I get to pitch. And I'm like, you know, what are you, what are you talking about, man? Oh, shit. And so, they'll actually bring people in and, and, you know, if there's maybe the, the five people before you or that week, they have a lot of really good people. They, they might not, they might not film. So he got booted from the year before he was back. He was freaking out. And um, so day of, you know, I was, I was lucky. Um, you know, I, my brothers flew in as well. So I'm like, man, they're flying around out here. There's no chance I don't you know, record today. And uh, there's probably no, it, it, the other thing that people don't know is that, even if you do record, you don't always air. And when you do air, they don't tell you you're going to air until two weeks before. So I always sat there. I was like, Hey, how could these people run out of inventory? Like, what are you thinking? This is your one chance to just absolutely crush and you have nothing to sell. Like, what are you thinking? But at the end of the day, it's actually a big gamble. And the gamble is first off, uh, you don't know if you're going to air. So only 70% of them do. So 30% don't. Uh, and then the second gamble is when am I going to air? Because, you only get this two week window to stack up on inventory. And most people can't do that in two weeks. Uh, so, you know, you get, you get this notification two weeks before, Hey, you guys are airing in two weeks and, and you're just sitting there like, Oh man. So you have to gamble if you want to have enough inventory. So the second it, it ended, um, you know, I got offers from all five. I closed the deal with, with Mark Cuban, Alex Rodriguez. I went and ordered inventory that day. So that day I was like, I am ordering inventory. I don't care. Uh, I know I have a three, you know, a 10 to 12, one, uh, 10 to 12 week window where I can get more inventory in. So I've got to do it now because I can air in three months. So I actually ordered the second that the show ended and um, I got it the week before we aired. So oh, it, was like, shit. it was like the biggest miracle, man. Oh, yeah. uh, so, so I took the gamble that, that most people don't take, but um, day of man got there. Uh, you know, you, you're, you're nervous. You got the butterflies like game day. And you're yeah. walking out there, lights are on. And then, what people freeze is when you finally walk out there and all five sharks are sitting there and then the cameras are like, Hey, just chill for two minutes. And the cameras just go around you so they can get every angle and make sure everything's your focus and all that. And you're good. You're good. You're good. And then, you know, you sit there for two minutes. You're like, you start <laughs> thinking, man, you start thinking of everything. And, uh, yeah. and then people start to pitch and they freeze. And, and man, I had this thing memorized. I could have frozen, still said it, you know, sleeping. I, I practiced it so many times. And, uh, Two minutes into it, I call my brothers out of the back room and we get this huge chest bump right in the middle of the floor. And all of a sudden I went from like looking Jack to like this little tiny guy on stage <laughs> once my brothers came out. And from there, it was just game on, man. You know, once the family's there, everything lightens up and, you know, yeah. we play a game of flip cup and it was kind of easy at that point. What people don't see as well is that that pitch was actually like 45 minutes to an hour long. All you really saw was like, you know, the first two minutes, my brothers run out, we play flip cup and then we close the deal but they just drilled me on everything from, from high school, you know, what I did after high school, what college I went to, what I did right after the pros, like everything you could possibly think of, they just hammered me with, but you just don't see that part because it's not as exciting. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's season nine, episode four, if I remember right off the top of my head. Yeah. Um, I, I, I should probably go ahead and link that in the show notes, but you guys can look it up. It's on Amazon. You can, you can pay for it. Um, really, really interesting because you, like you said, you were out there for so long but only a portion of that um, really kind of aired. But the real question, and I know Jason wants to ask this because he's like me, he's a super fucking bro. We want to know, were you thinking about pumping up before you went out or did you just go out? <laughs> Dude, you the know push-ups for sure, come on. <laughs> so uh, going back to the advice I got from you know, the guy that was on the, on the show, he's like, man, this is your one moment. You know, your kids are going to see this when you're older. You know, I never worked out so hard before you know, any event in my life. And uh, you know, I, was, you know, I was having glimpses in my mind, like, hey, man, what if I get this huge deal and I take my shirt off? Like, I got to look swole. So I was ready. <laughs> and um, I actually, so I got a good pump in the morning. And then my game plan was to you know, crush as many push-ups as I could right before I went out. But then I got kind of nervous because 
you know, I had to pinch for two minutes. And it's like, man, if I'm kind of out of breath, right. you know, I might, you know, I might mess up a little bit. I want to be smooth. I want to be you know, sweating a little bit and breathing heavy. So I actually cut the pushups. Uh, mm -hmm. it, was, it was a last minute decision and I cut the pushups out of the routine and, uh, you know, still had a little pump going from the morning. So I was good. That's great. Yeah, that's probably probably smart. I probably wouldn't have tried to pump anything up because, like you said, you'd be wheezing out there talking. Plus, nerves are going, so your heart yes. makes yeah. it away. I already was up, man. I would have been sweating everywhere. So once that adrenaline gets going, man, sometimes it's hard to find that breath. That first few breaths, it sucks. Let's uh, let's talk about some of the questions that they asked you. Let's just get let's get right to the the one that I'm most fascinated with. What was the hardest question they asked you, or was there one that caught you off guard, so to speak? Um, man, there's, there was, yeah, there's just one, there's one question and I, I still, it makes me mad to this day. Cause I, it's the only thing I wasn't ready for because, you know, you think that they're like these super experts, they know everything, right? Like they're marketing geniuses, like everything they say is you know spot on. So, you know, the one question they threw at me was, it, they counted me on it was, you know, why don't you call it the Gronk shaker? And it came to the point where Mr. Wonderful was like, Hey, how much inventory do you have? And I was like, ah, I have like 5,000 bottles. He's like, what is it going to cost me to get rid of them? And I was <laughs> like, what do you mean? He's like, that name sucks. We got to change the name. Why would you not take advantage of your family name? And they just crushed me with it. And I was sitting there like, man, that, that is not true at all. Like I, I know what it means to put a name on a product and it does really, really well with your fans. But anyone who is not a fan of New England is going to absolutely hate this product and not buy it for that sole purpose. And, and so by me putting his, you know, the family name on it and, and really, you know, it's, it's Rob's brand. It's not, you know, Gronk didn't come about because of me. It came about because of my brother. So um, I didn't want to piggyback on that success either, but yeah. you know, to put that name on a bottle was basically saying to, you know, a Cowboys fan or a Bills fan or Jets or, you know, Miami fan, Hey, don't buy me. And, and so we've seen him in the past, uh, you'll know, put his name on products and it did really, really well in the Northeast and, and with new England fans, but it never performed to what people expected it to because it crushed the rest of the market. So, um, hmm. you know, the whole idea. And then when I walked into there was I'm going to make a product, not just because it's a celebrity's name on it, but something that I actually want, I want to use, it's going to live past his career. Um, but, uh, but also at the same time, like it, it, it you know, the name made no sense. So I, I knew that I could always make a limited edition you know, if I needed to, you know, if yeah. I wanted to take advantage yeah. of that name yeah. and the celebrity status and the family name, great. I'll do that. I'll charge a premium on it and I'll come out with a special limited edition. And that's what we did right after the show. So that one question, uh, it frustrated me on the show. And, and I, I don't think they showed the whole part, but I did answer back to it. And that's how I answered it. And, um, you know, Mark and Alex were the only two that were like, yeah, they don't know what they're talking about. And, uh, I was going to ask you if Mark agreed with you. I mean, he obviously invested. So, yeah. So both of them were like, you are not changing the name. Like, yo, you're good. You started, you started building it. No, it doesn't make sense. Let's make a limited edition. And so they were right on board with it. I, I think they saw the athlete side of it. And what a lot of people don't understand is, you know, just a celebrity name isn't a celebrity to everybody. You know, yeah. it, 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 it isn't. So you have to realize that a lot of people will not like the product solely because of that. And I was already envisioning like, Hey, one bad fantasy game and like a hundred bad reviews on Amazon about the product. And I'm like, there's no way I'm letting that happen. So uh, <laughs> that question still to this day, I was thrown off by and yeah, people after the show would just write, just crush me online. Like you're an idiot, man. Why don't you change the name? Why are you changing the name? Like everything. But still to this day, I, I think I made the right play. I, I mean, I think your explanation is right. I mean, especially if you have data where it shows, you know, your brother's doing well in the Northeast and not other areas. I mean, it makes total sense. I, I agree. Yeah. We were able to still capitalize on it with the limited right. edition that we came out with right after right. the show. And um, it actually proved to not even be close to, you know, the numbers that they thought it was going to move, you know, yeah, it took us actually a lot longer to sell out of that product than we thought it was going to. Gotcha. Well, the other thing too is, you know, thirty years from now, and this no offense to you guys, we don't know, but what what's the what's the Gronk name look like if that's what the shaker bottle is basically called versus ice shaker? I mean, Joe Montana could have came out with something badass in ninety two or ninety three or or what have you, but now we're what thirty years past that. You know, is something Joe Montana still going to sell the same ways if he would have called it something else? Um, I. In my opinion, I think the shark should have learned something from your answer. It really. Yeah, man. I mean, the only the only thing you see that has lasted that long is Jordan's. 
and, yeah. and man, that's just he's just iconic though you know that's yeah. that's a whole nother level that's you know that's a one of one kind of situation I mean, everyone loved Jordan. I mean, everyone loved the Bulls back then. I mean, I did. I don't know many people that were like, you know, <laughs> dislike the Bulls. I mean, they're out there, but you know, it, it kind of transcends. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about. So you ended up getting offers from all five Sharks, but Alex Rodriguez was on as a guest. So kind of kind of talk about that. You got offers. How did you know that you wanted to go with Mark and Alex, and what did that look like? Yeah, so I, I was told Alex would be on it, and. Um, it was definitely a tough decision and there was nothing about Alex at the time, um, like what he did after, after sports. And he also was, you know, kind of blackballed from the MLB when he left. So it was a huge question mark. I didn't know much about him. I didn't know what A-Rod Corp really did. He was the one who sold me, um, you know, really during the show because, you know, he had the connection to all the gyms, which, you know, I couldn't find any information about online. And, you know, he, he had, he had a, a great way to promote, um, you know, he was building back his fan base. So, uh, I knew that he knew sports and I knew Mark knew sports and, you know, this was a product that was geared towards sports. I just, you know, in my mind, it was MLB, uh, NBA and NFL. If you could lock up the big three, man, there's no way you could go wrong. So uh, that was the game plan going in. I also saw Lori as, um, you know, a great asset as well. And, you know, to me, and, and what you think is the dream is to kind of like get this, this big group of sharks. Right. Um, I, I'm glad that that didn't happen because, what you realize quick in business, I'm, I'm sure you guys seen it as well, is the more people you put in and, and give them the decision-making power, it's almost like the less that gets done. You know, it, it becomes more difficult to work with. And um, so it, it, it's tough. And so I keep seeing that that pattern repeat over and over. So um, what ended up happening too was, um, you know, Alex helped a lot, uh, but he became super busy, man. Like he, he started, uh, you know, he had his own, he had, he was doing the, the announcing for the MLB. And, um, you know, he's dating J-Lo and he's everywhere with J-Lo, man. Like he's living it up big time. <laughs> and, um, you know, he, he almost he was back into that, that, you know, almost like an NFL or MLB player spotlight. And so um, at that point, my brother Rob was retired um, and he was looking to get into business. So he actually asked A-Rod if he could come into the business and buy out his shares. And um, Rob actually ended up buying Alex out. So it is now Rob, um, Mark and I in the company. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. So, so you went in, you, you were asking, um, for a hundred thousand dollar investment with 10% of the company. And I believe you ended up getting 150,000 and 15%. Is that right? Yeah. So we were able to stick with the valuation and, and we just, uh, yeah, I just gave up a little bit more equity. Awesome. So after the show, you, they have this thing, I think it's called the shark tank effect or whatever. What kind of growth did you see right after? Because you aired right before the holiday season, correct? Yeah, man. We were like, prime time man end of october and um you get like a wave though because people record now and people watch later on hulu and all that so right uh, we, we aired in october it kind of led right into the holiday season as well and it just rolled man and it was good so we saw the shark tank effect we, we went in at eighty thousand. uh 12 months later we did over 3 million in sales and it, it was real man it, it was definitely real the biggest thing is it's a proof of concept you know for all five sharks to want to invest it's pretty much telling the world like, Hey man, this is amazing. Everybody needs one. And you know, before that, you know, people didn't even know what it was. You know, it, you needed that proof of concept and, and, and by getting those offers, it, it was huge, man. And so what happened was, you know, we probably 20 X, um, you know, over the next 12 months, but with that, you know, so did the work, man, the, the work 20 X as well. <laughs> and it went from the side hustle in my upstairs, you know, bedroom, uh, where I was shipping out of to a you know, full-time job and, you know, within the, the first couple of weeks, we had to get into a warehouse. We got a 3,000 square foot warehouse and I thought it was just freaking massive. And uh, we grew out of that in a year, um, just grew out of our second warehouse. And, and now we're in a 16,000 wow. square foot warehouse. So um, it, it's moved pretty quick. And, um, oh, yeah. and with the Shark Tank effect, man, what it really did is it taught me how to run a business really quick, man. <laughs> you learn a lot so fast when you're forced to learn it. And once that wave ends, that's when it really starts because you're like, man, like the, you know, the sales are stopping. What's going on? Like, what do I do now? And, and that's when you really have to figure it out. So, uh, man, Shark Tank effects real. Um, but <laughs> most people, you know, they, they don't get past that hump, man. Most of the companies don't go on to be, you know, these, these super uh, successful businesses because, you know, you go in, you're young, you get that effect, and then you just don't know how to continue it. So uh, the real work started. I think the real work started, you know, 
really figuring out how to actually run a business once the wave stopped. So what, what's your inventory look like? Because I, I know from my end, you know, we've got just a little over 90 days in, we saw a really big uptick in business when I launched, like it blew me away. But as time goes on, that whole, you know, everything new kind of slows down. And now you're like, okay, now what I'm, what am I really working with? So, you know, the first, the first couple months, I'm like, holy shit, I need to have a lot of inventory and things start to slowly trickle down. And I'm like, okay, I've got a lot of inventory. What's that look like for you? on like 10 times, a hundred times that scale because you had the shark tank effect. That's the part I'm still trying to figure out is how much inventory do I need to have? How do I not run out? How, how big of a problem was that for you? Yes, it's, it's huge. It's a, it's a huge problem with anyone that carries inventory. And, and what you don't know is kind of exactly what you said. You know, when something is new, it always crushes, man. So we can bring in a new color and it's like, boom, sells out. I mean, our last, our last launch, we sold out in nine days. We brought in like these tie dye, these tie dye colors, and all this stuff. Like, man, we got to get product in immediately. And then we bring it back, and all of a sudden it doesn't do as well, or it's a different time of the year. And you're like, right. man. And so what we did, what was such a big issue was, you know, we brought in everything we could. We're like, hey, let's bring in tumblers, you know, wine cups, like any kind of cup we could think of. Let's try it out. And it was awesome, and they would sell well. But you know, after two years, we're like, all right, you know, this is getting out of control. You know, we need to also go back to what our brand truly is. You know, what do we actually represent? Let's not just throw stuff out there because it sells well. Let's throw stuff out there that actually, you know, goes with the brand and with our mission. And, and that was really, it started to, to live a more active and healthy lifestyle. So, you know, why are we selling a wine cup? Why do we have a champagne flute? It doesn't even make sense. You know, what, what are we trying to do here? You know, the, the real goal and, and the real brand and why I started it was to help people, you know, live that active lifestyle. So, um, Inventory got out of control and then we had to tone it back down, man. So we had to say, Hey, you know, what's our core products? What are we, you know, what are we making the majority of our money on? You know, let's focus on that. And then what we did from there was just ask your customers what they're looking for. You know, yeah. you ask those base customers that maybe they bought five times from us, uh, you know, maybe 20 at this point, man. Some people just, you know, um, they come in and there's ways to do that. Now there's ways to, you know, with software to get, you know, I actually get emails now when you know someone makes their 10th purchase sends me an email and says, Hey, this person, person just bought you know, 10 times from you. And, and it's just a good way for me to go in and just shoot them a thank you or, or send them an extra uh, you know, bottle or something like that in the next package. But it also gives you a, a, a time to ask some questions. Like, Hey, it looks like you really enjoy the product. What would you like to see next? And, and that's kind of what we started doing instead of just throwing stuff out there randomly. So you have to control that inventory. Uh, it, it's tough at first because like you said, everything hits at first, man. Everything's at home run. And then, then it, then it levels out and then you see where you're really at, but it takes at least a year of data. It really, for me, it was, it was almost two because, you know, we were launching so much new stuff. And so, you know, we have a spike this month because we launched something new and then we have a spike that month. And then we just had to really look and say, Hey, at this time, this is what sells, you know, this is, this is four years, it took four years to really figure that out though. You know, this time of the year, this is what sells, this is what doesn't, you know, this is what colors work. This is what doesn't, this is what product works. This is what doesn't now let's clean it. You know, let's just go with that core products and, you know, let's push it because at the end of the day, you're like, man, I feel like I maxed out. Like, you know, I feel like I maxed out the market. Like everyone's heard of you before. Right. And then you walk down the street to a store that you haven't been to yet that you're like, there's no way they never heard about me. I walked to a CrossFit gym uh, right before COVID hit. I walked in, I was like, Hey guys, just want to introduce myself. See if you ever heard of us. This is a quarter mile down the street, man, to next to our new building. <laughs> and I walk in and the guy's like, man, I never heard of you. I wish you came here a little earlier. I'm like, no way, man. So that the market's unlimited, man. You'll never tap them. So you don't need to just sit there and just come out with something new each and every day. You know, you'll never, ever saturate your market. It's tempting, man. It's, it's tempting. I've had to really slow myself down. Jason, I've learned a lot watching you guys over at New Ethics. I've really got to slow myself down because yeah. you introduce something and everybody's like, fuck yeah, they jump on it. And then you yeah. get it restocked and you're like, why aren't you motherfuckers buying this as fast yeah. as you were before? So yeah. uh, Jason, is there anything you want to add to that before we, we go on to the next part? Um, I mean, I, I, I found exactly what Chris was saying to be true. Uh, and what I mean is, stay true to your core values. You know, um, I feel like, you know, we have our pillars, you know, with new ethics and we've tried to remain within that and try to not grow beyond our means too quickly, you know? And so at times, you know, I think we've done a really good job of it, but at times, you know, you get a little anxious or you get a little overzealous 
And um, that has to be tempered so that you stay within your mission. And I think what he was saying there was right on cue and, you know, not just to get overzealous, but remember what your mission is and remember why you brought out the product and stick to that. And that's what we're trying to do at New Ethics in terms of, you know, our different types of formulas that we make, you know, it'd be very easy for us to start putting on in one offs, um, you know, but they don't, it doesn't really necessarily solve problems. And that's what we do really well. Um, so I, I, I 100% agree with, with what Chris is saying. And I think that as an entrepreneur, um, people need to remember that and, and why they got into that business and stick to their, their core values. Chris, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and wrap this up and get to a few more points here. Um, how connected are you still uh, with Mark Cuban? Is are there times that he still helps out? Did you guys build a team that kind of helps out in his kind of in, in his name? What, what's that look like? Yeah, man. So he he started Mark Cuban Companies, and so after uh, he probably has over seventy different Shark Tanks in his portfolio, Shark Tank companies in his portfolio right now, and uh, he also invests in others as well. So they all fall under this Mark Cuban Companies. Uh, umbrella. So with that, he built out a team to help us. Now, Mark's really, his goal was just to help people live the American dream. You know, he's not sitting there hounding me for reports and dividends and all that. Uh, he's there to help. So they're basically uh, a consultant at, at this point. So anytime I have questions, you know, I reach out to them. It's a great networking opportunity because with those 70 companies come 70 other CEOs that I can reach out to for free and easily connect with them and ask them questions. So you know, if I want to know about, you know, someone that's crushing it with SMS, for instance, you know, I could reach out to them and say, Hey man, you know, how's people, how's everyone doing on SMS? Like, is that a good platform? Well, Hey, there's one company that's doing really well with it. Let me connect you with their CEO. Awesome. Get on there. Boom. You know, I figure it out, kind of get, you know, this, yeah. this free look at it uh, from a company that's actually using it. That's not going to be biased towards it. And you know, if they're crushing, I'm going to jump in too. So we did, we did that recently. And, um, you know, SMS has, has taken off for us. You know, we've, we've had over 10,000 people sign up in less than a month and it's been a great channel for us as well. So uh, that's what comes with, with, with Mark. They're not going to come in and take over your company. They're not going to run it for you. Like you're, you're still doing the work. People think, you know, Shark Tank, Mark Invest, boom, you know, they're chilling. Mark's doing the work. That's not happening. You know, you're still doing it. You're still running it. You know, all you're really getting is, is amazing connections and help, you know, and help at the end of the day, like, you know, if I have a question where I'm like, man, like I need to ask somebody else, you know, I, I can't just make this decision. It's too important. I'm going to call up Mark's team and I'm going to say, Hey man, this is really important. Uh, you know, have you had experience with this? What do you think I should do? And I'll just get a second opinion. And sometimes just talking through it with someone that has experience and watched 70 other companies go through similar situations. You know, that's, that's, that's invaluable. So that's, that's been huge for us. How do you, do you think, people that are purebred entrepreneurs, I know all three of us are, um, do you think guys like Mark, do you think in the, in the other sharks, do you think they're doing this because they just love the game? I mean, you see people like Gary V going out, um, uh, garage selling the guy makes yeah. millions and hundreds of millions of dollars a year, but he loves the game. I, you know, Jason and I are getting ready to host our seminar and you know, we can make more money just doing zoom online classes, um, easily, but we love the game. Like we love that in the trenches stuff. And, and I know that you're the same way. Do you think guys like Mark are doing this because they love it? Or do you think there's a shit ton of money in what they're doing with Shark Tank? And I, I mean, true. I think Mark is doing it just to help people. Uh, yeah. and I, I know, and I've talked to his team where, you know, if they're struggling, he will come in, he will come in and um, he'll take over the whole company if he has to. He's also came in and he's put more money into companies, uh, not for more equity, but just to keep them afloat. And, and try to get them back, um, you know, from, from going out of business. So uh, he's also came in and, um, you know, at certain times, uh, I know the guy from Nuts and More, I uh, said that, yo, know, Mark's came in and he's brought a full team in to come in for a week, go through the entire business and tell them, hey, you know, this is what you guys can be doing better. This side should be running this. And so he cares, man. And that's, that's what, he's, what he's trying to get across at the end of the day is, you know, I, I want to help people live the American dream. And that's kind of why he started the show as well. So I think that's why he's doing it. Um, I, I'm sure there's great, great, great amounts of money as well. But man, you're you're a multi-billionaire, so I don't I don't think it, it doesn't right. matter how much money's thrown at you at that point. His you're life's not getting any better it. financially. It's <laughs> yeah, exactly. So right. yeah, he's doing it uh, just for the love of the game, man, and, and just yeah. to help people out. That's what I would think. That's a hell of a resource too. Wow, I mean, that's that's amazing. Um, a couple more questions here, and then we'll we'll wrap it up. Um, 
Do you have anything new planned for 2020 for the holiday season or anything coming down the pipe that you want to tell people about with the uh, product? Then we'll talk about how people can get it and wholesale and stuff like that. Yeah, man. So, so for 2020, I mean, we have new colors coming out, um, stuff like that. We're actually, we have um, the jugs coming, man, which I'm pretty excited about, but man, it's, it, there's actually a lot of technology that goes into the jugs and they'll keep water cold for like, man, like a week long. Uh, they're oh, crazy, wow. but a uh, half gallon and a full gallon jug that will be coming out. And man, I'm, it's kind of for myself again, man, my kids are getting to that age where they're playing youth sports. I'm like, man, I need a bigger jug to bring to games and also just work, man. Everyone's trying to drink a gallon of water a day. So we have that coming, but unfortunately we won't hit that until about January. So anyone who's looking to get back in shape in January, hit that flow. Uh, we should have those available by then. But man, 2020 is, um, we're really just, we're, we're trying to bring in a sales team. And for the first time ever, we'll actually have a sales team, which I'm super excited about because, you know, since day one, everyone has just came to us. You know, the Shark Tank exposure was amazing. Uh, but like I said, you know, before COVID, you walk into a gym right down the street and they don't know who you are. That's when you know you got to bring a sales team in and start getting out there a little bit more. Uh, we do really well online, but online only reaches so far. Not everybody's on Facebook. Not everyone's, you know, searching the web. So, uh sales team coming and um a couple couple new colors and then some new product in january i know uh there there are quite a few people here listening that maybe and i know you know like a good friend of mine kenny claiborne for example he has his team claiborne um yep. out of fort knox kentucky good friend of mine he's done some for his team so we have a lot of coaches that have a large client base that would like to do something like this for their team or gyms out there that want to sell them or other people like me and jason that don't like i said i have fat muscle project all over these and we do different colors our newest one's going to be fat and strong um so we do those people can can buy those for me how can people get set up for wholesale because that to me is really i mean buying the ice shakers is cool and all but to be able to have your own stuff on there and set up a wholesale account i think that's kind of the ultimate really yeah man so we got so many that is another cool thing we just launched as well we do have an affiliate program now as well uh so super easy to sign up you get your own link. Uh, it's not coupon codes anymore. It's actually a link. So it doesn't look like you're just hustling product and, um, you know, it pays a 10%, 10% commission. So we've had over 500 people sign up for it in a week, uh, that we just launched. So super excited about that, but yeah, wholesale, we just actually launched, um, an actual wholesale account that you can sign up for as well. Uh, the only thing with that is if it's going to be customized, uh, you just have to contact us because we have to do that manually. Uh, there's right. no way to just upload logos, uh, into the system. And we've tried it in the past, but, um, you know, special formatting and you want to get approved back and all that as well. So uh, the technology just isn't there yet for that. So uh, we have a wholesale tab on our website. It will, it will show you the contact us or just shoot us a, an email and we'll send back the proofs to get you all set up and, and good to go. Uh, but man, yeah, it's been good. It's a great gift. Uh, with personalization, we can do, you know, names, logos, sayings, your know, event logos, really anything like that. So for the holidays, uh, for, you know, big time customers or for employees, we see a huge uptick. We actually see it now because people like to plan out and um, with customized stuff, if you try to order last minute, especially during the holidays, we do get backed up a little bit. Yeah. If you guys want to check them out, I'm going to link um, the website here in the show notes. So you can just go to those show notes. It's hyperlink. Just click on it. It'll take you right to ice shakers website. Um, I'm a big fan of the 26 ounce shaker. That's the one that we use. And we usually sell those out within a week. Um, we like to order and do different colors and all kinds of fun stuff. So if you guys want to check those out, go ahead and go on over to the ice shaker website, man, this has been a fun revealing episode. I know Jason and I, we talk so much about physique enhancement, but we're both businessmen, entrepreneurs, and a lot of our clients ask for stuff like this and show listeners. Um, man, is there anything else that, that you want to say before we, uh, before we get off here, anything maybe that we didn't cover about shark tank or just you in general? Man, that, that was, that was a good episode, man. That was a good episode right there. No, good stuff. Uh, man, congratulations to both of you on all the success. And Matt, can please continue to help everyone with, with everything you're doing. The free content is amazing. Definitely check out the book as well. I'm sure all of your listeners have already at this point. But man, uh, for me, 2020, just man, keep your head up and keep grinding. There's so much opportunity right now that, that people are missing. You know, they're, they're making excuses because, you know, these things are happening or that and they can't get out there. But with that comes so much opportunity. And Man, just keep your head up, keep it on swivel and keep grinding and, and you're going to find it. You're going to be successful. So, man, that's that's all I got right now. And um, really what's, appreciate having you guys on. What's your on. Instagram? 
Uh, you can find me at Chris Gronkowski, um, and the Ice Shaker is at Ice Shaker Bottle. Okay. Um, so Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook as well. And um, I'm all over, man. TikTok, I post everywhere, man. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and link up the social too for Chris here in the show notes. So if you're listening now, now that we're towards the end, once we're done, just click on everything. You'll have a direct link for everything that we've talked about. Um, Jason, do you have any other, you have any follow-up questions for him? Anything that, that we didn't get to on your end? No, I think that was pretty thorough and um, you know, I'm good. Yeah, no, it was a great I just appreciate episode. you coming on. I mean, that, that was cool. You know, um, anytime we get entrepreneur on has been, been that successful and had a different, you know, take on things and being on shark tank is pretty, pretty cool. So yeah, it's, okay. been, it's, it's been a good run, man. It's been fun. Awesome. I'll get one of these in your hand next week, Jason, whenever oh, yeah. you're here for the seminar. So oh, yeah. um, we're going to go out. ahead and wrap this up. Good deal. For myself, Jason, and Chris, we're out of here. Thanks, guys. See ya. Thanks, guys.